our goal is to take a sales table and calculate not only the sales for each product by month, but the moving annual total. Now, two videos ago, we did worksheet functions. Last video, we did Power Query. And this video, we get to use DAX. We have our data model here in Power Pivot. You can also do this in Power BI. This is our data model. The F sales is the fact table. There's the D date and D product dimension tables with a one to many relationship. Over in data view, under the fact table, we already have one measure, total sales, simply adding up the sales column. Since our goal is to have month and product in the row area and total sales and then map, Let's build our data model pivot table before we create our mat measure. I'll click Pivot Table. I want it on the existing sheet. K5 is fine. Click OK. From the D date table, we'll drag end of month. From the product table, we'll drag product. And from the fact table, we'll drag total sales. Now, in a data model pivot table, if we look at the measure right there, Bellin flows in as a condition or criteria into the data model filters the product down just to Bellin, and that date filters the date table down to just January 2019. Those filters flow across the relationship and filter the fact table down to just the values that meet those two conditions. But what we need to do in our measure is change the filter context. We need to take this as an input, but then stretch it back 12 months. Well, the function that can change the filter context is the calculate function. So back over in the measure grid, I'll start typing. That shoots me up to the formula bar. And we use the assignment operator colon equal sign. In Power BI, it's just an equal sign. And then C tab. The expression, that's where we put our measure for total sales. Square bracket, I see it, tab, comma. And the filter is where we can change the filter context. And we don't need to change the product. All we need to do is change the date. So we use dates in period. Now, this function only works if you have a date table. And that first argument, dates, needs the first column in the date table, date. And then from that column, we need to define a new set of dates, comma, the start date. We need to pick out the last date in the row area of the pivot table. That becomes our start date to jump backwards one year. So we say last date. And for dates, we have to put in the date column from the date table. And now last date, for every row in the pivot table, we'll pick out the last date in that particular range. So close parentheses. And that's the start date, comma to jump a certain number of intervals forwards or back. We're going to go back one year, so minus 1, comma. And interval, we can jump a number of days, months, quarter, but we want year. Close parentheses. And so dates in period, using last date, takes that last date in from the pivot table row area and then converts it to a legitimate set of one year back dates that Calculate uses to change the filter context. And that way, our measure sees all the dates one year back. So I'll hit Enter, add some formatting, something like number, click OK. Now we can drag our new measure down to values. And there it is. There's our moving annual total. And it correctly gets 913, 818, and just like back in Power Query last video, for the months where there are no sales, we still get the correct mat. All right, so the last three videos, we saw how to do mat with worksheet formulas, Power Query, and now DAX. All right, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out more about DAX and Power Query and data analysis, here's my free advanced data analysis class here at YouTube.